Applying a Duracoat finish to a scope is pretty much the exact same process as applying it to a rifle, of course. There are just a few notable exceptions. First off, you do want to make sure that nothing gets on the lenses. So I have masked off uh, my ocular ring here, my focus ring, uh, the kind of front focus ring here. And uh, of course I've masked off the lens itself, so I'm not going to get any paint on there. Objective end. I have some paper down over the lens and I've stuffed in a bunch of cotton. This one I didn't mask off the edges because I, I do want this to be totally covered in the Duracoat finish right up to the edges. I don't want my prairie dogs or anything to be able to see any little bits. It probably doesn't really matter, but that's just me. I like to cover as much as I can. Uh, I have, since this is an, object, uh, an adjustable objective on this lens, um, I have taped off the numbers, so this is my uh, uh, the indication of range through here. I've also put a little bit of masking tape over the dot that indicates uh, where it aligns. And I've done the same thing back here on zoom. So I have a cover over the dot, and then I have a cover over the numbers as well. Now, in this case, I'm going to have a pretty easy job on this, because the turrets here if I had some of the big, you know, kind of target style turrets, and these are small ones, uh, if I had some of the bigger ones, I would Duracoat those like I have on my, uh, my Falcon. But this, since I have some nice little turret caps and those things are small anyway, I'm just going to cap these off and Duracoat this whole thing as you see it. Now, one of the things that you'll want to keep in mind is that uh, I don't want to get any Duracoat under these rings, if I can help it. Uh, I don't want there to be anything between the ring and the body of the scope. And that is because even minute differences uh, that kind of increase the diameter of this tube could lead to some problems where I'm crushing the erectors. This is a, uh, a, a second focal plane scope. Uh, I'm trying to remember where the erectors are on this. I think it's on this side. but. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm not squishing them under this ring. And if I ever take these off, I'll probably want to clear away the Duracoat under where they are, like if I need to shift anything around. Now this scope is already tuned up where I need it to be on my rifle. Uh, this is already zeroed out, so all I'm going to be doing is just painting this. And when I put it on the rifle, it should work right away. Just like with the two rifles that I've demonstrated so far, my particular camo that I'll be putting together is going to be, it's going to have a base layer of 50% Tactical Coyote Brown, 50% Tactical Woodland Brown. That gets me kind of a nice uh, mid-brown. I didn't want anything quite this light, nothing quite this dark, and I think it serves as a pretty good base coat. This will be a 50-50 mix of this, and then one part in 12 of Duracoat Hardener. In case you're wondering about sizes, I'm just going to be doing a tablespoon of both of these mixed together, and that should pretty well cover this, I think. Sometimes it's hard to gauge. Uh, I anticipate having just a little bit left over, and I might use that to touch up some spots on one of my rifles. But uh, I think one, excuse me, one full tablespoon of this stuff should coat this scope, and more. We'll see. Just like in my previous demonstration videos, I will be, of course, wearing a mask because this stuff is pretty nasty and it does go uh, airborne in a big way. I'll be wearing gloves this time because last time I gave myself some Duracoat nails and once that stuff sets in, my gosh, I'm just going to have to wait for these to grow out pretty much. And of course, I'll have some glasses. I'll be using this Pasha airbrush, hobby airbrush. And this container right here holds probably about one and a half tablespoons of the, uh, the good stuff. So uh, this will be plenty for this project. I have a bigger one that I smashed last week accidentally. And uh, hopefully this will be good enough for today. You'll note that I'm keeping everything really light. And I'm keeping everything moving. You don't want it to stop and sit in one area for a while. 
and you don't want it too thick. Keep it nice and thin, you can always do multiple coats. Now one thing that I hadn't done at first and I just now did, I went ahead and put a rough mask uh, off the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the rings here where it mates with the, uh, the base on the rifle. And that's probably a pretty good idea to just mask that off, keep overspray from getting on there. It's not the biggest deal, but again, uh, if you have a little bit of overspray on there, then what it's going to do is uh, change your point of impact possibly just a little bit. That happened to me with my other rifle. Um, so hopefully I can keep that to a minimum. But since I painted the base on my rifle as well, I'm assuming there's going to be a point of impact shift. And when I get this thing locked down for the first time, all put together, uh, I'll just re-zero the rifle. Not going to be a huge deal. But if you can save yourself a little time, go ahead and do it. By now with this second coat, you can see that the color is really starting to come through. But you can also see that I'm keeping it light enough that you can still read the text on the objective here. And that's probably a pretty good idea. You want to keep these coats nice and light so that they stay very flat. If you start to spray this on so that it gets done quickly, say in one coat, it's not going to be quite as flat as the method I'm using right here. It's almost fuzzy in the end. <laughs> It looks like I calculated absolutely perfectly. One full tablespoon. Got me three coats on the scope. So this thing is looking nice. And it also got me two coats on my barrel, which needed just a little bit more. So this is looking pretty darn good. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to get into the second color which is going to be uh, just the uh, woodland brown. Here's the pretty well dried scope. I've had this sitting here for about an hour. So this is my base coat and it is looking pretty darn good. The next thing to do is use our tactical woodland brown and apply some of these digital shapes that I've cut out. I'm just going to apply these all over. And what I like to do is instead of going with those large stencils, and I've mentioned this in uh, some of the other Duracoat videos I've done, I like to use relatively smaller shapes and I don't stick them at all. I just hover them over the surface and then use the airbrush to spray them on. And in this case, before I was doing very thin coats, this is going to be one, uh, you know, decently thick coat because uh, I do have to get coverage. If I were sticking this, I could do multiple coats. But uh, in this case, I have to get full coverage in one pass. Otherwise, I might accidentally move it around and uh, it wouldn't come out so great. So I'll get pretty good coverage and I'm going to keep the airbrush as far back as I can just to get a good spread. But the goal here is instead of having gigantic stencils that cover this whole thing and are really elaborate, it's much easier to take these small ones and then make them connect to basically create a big one without having to do any, you know, fine, complicated work. It's all just done over time. And what really makes this pop is as you start getting into these smaller uh, high frequency, low amplitude sort of stencils, that's where things really start to come alive and begin to look organic, especially when we apply the single pixel. And you can see this on the rifle videos that I've done. This single pixel just kind of tacked onto the edges of some of these stencils really softens them up and makes everything look really organic, especially from a distance.
One thing to make sure that you do is that you bring your shapes all the way to the edge. That helps to break the shape up. And when it comes to any special features or contours on this thing, like these turrets for example, you want to make sure to break those up too. So I'll be applying some brown, and my goal is to have it wrap around surfaces. So this shape will continue like this, around here, and around here. Now in this case, maybe this big stencil isn't the best idea. Maybe a small one is better. But uh, I'll give it a shot. It could be fun. Here it is without all of the single pixel work to kind of break up the blockiness. It's looking pretty good right now. And we can make it look a little bit better just by adding those single pixel spots. Watch this. Here's the scope with all the single pixels added. You can see what a big difference that makes. It takes those big blocky shapes, starts to break them down. This is going to look really good once we get green on. And then once we get those uh, lighter tan little splotches on there too, this is going to be very solid. Our next color is going to be Tactical Woodland Green. You can tell it's tactical in the name. And I'm going to give this uh, pretty much the same coverage as I did the Woodland Brown. It'll be a 50-50 split. On the right, here we have a four color camouflage job. And this is the end product that we're going for. Here on the left, this is my uh, other scope. This one needs to have its fourth color added. So far it's looking pretty good, but it's all just kind of flat. These colors are roughly in the same uh, sort of lightness range. So even though the colors are kind of breaking things up, as far as lightness, brightness values go, uh, it's not being broken up all that much. This helps out, this brown here, but for the most part, it's still really not that dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some straight Tactical Coyote Brown. And actually, what I did in the past is I used straight uh, Coyote Brown on here, but I think I'm going to make it pop just a little bit more. I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of this uh, desert beige. I think this is going to help it uh, kind of get a little three-dimensionality to it. You can see with this one back here, this older scope, that uh, it's just broken up a little bit more. That little little pop of the lighter color helps to break up the shapes and make it look less like a scope. And it really works especially as you start backing up uh, and you have this thing in the brush or on the grass. But uh, I think this one's gonna come out even better. And the trick with some of these colors, like if you go for the extremes, if you're going for, uh, say, black, like you have here on an actual Marpat Camelback here, or if you're looking at Ilby or one of the, uh, the other Marpat items, okay, they have a really, really dark brown or black in them which I do not have here. This probably would be broken up a bit better if I had that, but I was just kind of picking things from the catalog that I thought would work. I, I goofed up a little bit. Uh, I might come back and put a darker color on there sometime. Uh, I think it would help break up the shape, but as it is, it works so well, I kind of don't want to mess with it. But uh, adding this light color, you want to make sure that whether it's really dark or the really light that you don't use all that much. You'll see that I have a lot of the base coat. I have large sections of these colors that are kind of the mid-tones. And then I have very little actually of the bright stuff. So if you're using very dark or very light, keep those ones kind of high frequency, small bits. 
don't use so much of them. You want to have mo most of the coverage be the base layer, uh, these kind of broad colors here, these big ones, and then where you have the extremes, you want to use very little because it's going to kind of emulate highlights and things like that. You don't want to make it look like, uh, I don't know, that it jumps out at you. You don't want to have too many highlight areas. Four colors, and the rifle is going to match this. We're in full sun right now, and you can see that the method I use, there's very little gloss to it. It is extremely flat. As long as you go slow, you should end up with pretty much the same results. You get a nice flat finish on it. Ha 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 ha!